Hello, friends. It's time to take another look at the Beretta Tomcat. Based on my original review of this kind of strange pocket pistol, y'all love this gun. Like, you really, really love this gun. I was shocked. Usually when I put out a video, I kind of know roughly how it's going to perform. But I was way off here. There are a lot of Tomcat fans, and with good reason, I think. These are among the best pocket guns on the market, which is a very small category in 2020. And the Tomcat is certainly at the larger end of the pocket category. But it's well made, it feels great, and has a decent capacity. There's a lot to love here. But one of my initial concerns with this gun was longevity. Not because this gun is poorly constructed, but because pocket pistols traditionally just have shorter lifespans than larger guns. So here we are, 1500 rounds in, to take a look at how the Tomcat is doing, both in terms of wear and overall performance. And I'll also discuss how I feel about the gun. Sometimes over the course of testing, I end up feeling differently about a gun than I did when I made the initial review. That's the case here. I love the gun now more than I did then. I just love this damn thing. It's fantastic. It's not right for everyone, or maybe even most people, but if you enjoy pocket pistols, this is definitely one of the ones you should have in your collection. You need to take a look at this. So this is going to be a deep dive. We're going to pull the gun apart and look at all the wear points, and then we're going to look at some range footage too. And now, a public service message. I've noticed that my original review attracted a very different demographic than my usual viewers. Uh, that particular video was mostly watched by easily offended older white gentlemen. Y'all are more fragile than a precious moments collectible carried over a tile floor by a toddler who's four pixie sticks away from a diabetic coma. Y'all need to learn to handle some fucking adversity in your lives. So no upfront. I say naughty things. I show naughty pictures. Wow, that sounds worse than what you'll actually see. But none of this is to be taken seriously. If you can't handle that, then, you know, get the fuck out. I, I don't care how much this offends you. In fact, I, I hope I do offend you. When you get offended, you are providing me with entertainment and brightening my day. But um, more than that, each time you cry in the comments about my foul mouth or how much you hate my videos, you are extending my evil life on earth in this fragile human body with the power of your impotent rage that I might continue to taunt you with mean comments about your favorite gun, the Springfield XD. So thank you. Thank you for giving me life. Much like the demon god Slanesh, your worst impulses, whining, and hatred of things that you don't understand. Things like pants that are too low, Cardi B, Dr. Fauci, and probably Facebook posts that you think are actually news. Through these things, you created me to torment you with horse pictures. Here I am. Okay, anyway, on with the show. After a year or so, what do I think of this gun overall? Well, I love this gun. As I've said many times, I'm a firm believer that 32 is still a great defensive option for certain circumstances. Recoil is low, even with a gun this small, so you can get rapid good hits. With a very small 9mm and even some 380s, there is substantially more recoil than with 32. It's not painful usually, but you can't get as many solid hits in a narrow time window as you can with a 32. So there might be some situations where it's worth it to sacrifice power for speed. Only you can make that call, but it might be worthy of consideration. This thing looks like Granny's purse gun, <laughs> like I spent my whole social security check on it. No meals on wheels for me because I got to protect myself. But you know, for us younger folks, you might also find a use for a gun like this. You don't always need to have a rolling special stuffed in your pants, even if the ladies, gentlemen, and horses find it impressive. Uh, don't get me wrong, the rolling special is great, but carrying shit like that is a real pain in the ass. It's a lot easier to have one of these in your pocket. We all come in different shapes and sizes, and we all live different sorts of lives in different places. You have to choose the gun or guns that suit you and your size. I would personally be entirely unwilling to change the way I dress just to carry. If you want to do that, that's fine. But, um, you know, often when a, a person notes that they have trouble carrying a Glock 19 with an optic on it, somebody pops up to say, well, just you know, wear a, a burlap sack and you can, you can cram that thing right in there. Fuck that. Your whole life is not about carrying. Guns are fun beyond fun. We all know this, but you do have a life to live. Find a gun that fits in your life and get on with it. I hear this a lot, surprisingly. Well, I carry a Glock 40 MOS. It's totally possible. That is a real quote 
from my Glock 40 review. While I appreciate that you can make that work, and I'm impressed, you can't offer that up as, as though it will apply to other people. Like, how, how do you dress? What's your body type? How tall are you? What's your job? How do you carry it? That all matters. I'm 5'8 and about 160 pounds. How the hell would I fit the Glock 40 in my pants? <laughs> but then again, you, you might have no trouble. But you can't say to me, oh, you'll be able to make it work, no problem. That's just not the way it works. In much the same way, I'm not telling you that you need this gun or that this will work for you. Instead, I'm telling you that if you're looking at this sort of gun, the Tomcat is an outstanding option. With various safety mechanisms, this gun is suitable for pocket carry. Got a safety on this side. And it's uh, double action, single action. It's got the same capacity as the original PPK while being overall smaller. Now, it is a little bit thicker. The gun is also less finicky than most of the PPKs that I've tried. Uh, though a few reliability problems have appeared over the last year, luckily they are entirely avoidable. More on that later. And folks love the PPK. They still sell, even though I personally find them rather unpleasant to use. And they don't presently produce it in 32. That's another mark against it for me. This gun will fill the same role and better, I think, in my opinion. In another unexpected twist, this gun is very fun to shoot, unlike the PPK. Far more than you'd think it would be. I love taking it to the range. Now, let's break the gun down and see how it's wearing. Ah, but first, a shameless plug. I put a TGP shirt up on Teespring. Remember, you asked for this. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's hand-drawn. It's actually kind of funny, but it is, it is the, the worst shirt ever. Uh, also, if you'd like to join the TGP Discord, consider supporting the channel on Patreon, and folks at $5 and above get patches periodically. I just kind of send them out uh, whenever, and uh, working on getting a, getting a new design out, too. Your support is what keeps the channel alive, and I'm immensely grateful for all of you. I am the luckiest penguin in the world. Also, I reinvest all the money back in the channel, so I'm not pocketing any, uh, any of that money. It all goes into stuff that I review here or ammo. I haven't seen how dirty you can really get this gun, and that's what we're going to find out today is how dirty. It Only you would do at. this. Say what? Only you would do this. You know, somebody's got it. Let's step over here. Inside the gun. The takedown is strange. I discussed it in detail in the original review, so no need to do that here. But in short, you raise the barrel and pull it up past where it naturally stops. Then you pull the slide uh, up and off the gun. Now it's uh, field stripped. That's all there is to it. Strange, but, but simple. So surprisingly, at this round count, I don't see excessive wear. For a gun this small, that's great. I mean, there there is wear, but it's not it's not crazy. It's not as bad as I would expect it to be, but it's a little more than I was maybe hoping for. We see wear in all the usual places. Most of it's here on these very small rails. You know what? I'm going to clean this up as we go. Yeah, this, was, this needed a cleaning. That was dirtier than I thought it was, so now you can really see that wear there. We see it in all the usual places, small rear rails. There's also some where the slide's bar rides under the barrel and where the uh, slide touches the frame up front. I'll include detailed pictures so that you can see what I'm talking about. Where never comes through in videos, whatever you see here and in the pictures, you can pretty much 
take it that there's probably twice as much in person. I've just noticed that as a, as a general rule. Pictures just never quite pick up the severity of wear. But again, for a gun this size, man, this is totally reasonable. This is this is fine. <laughs> I'm I'm you know I was hoping for less, but I'm still I'm still thrilled. I think this gun's going to do fine in our in our test. So you need to make sure that you lube all of these wear points. You should do that with all guns, but the Tomcat seems to particularly require a certain amount of lubrication to function. So make sure you stay on top of it. We're going to talk about that in detail in the next section, just like reliability. But with some small 380s and 9mm, they have a very short life. There have been reports that the small Rugers can wear out over the course of a long weekend class, but I haven't seen this in person. That's just internet forum speculation without real evidence until somebody sort of documents that carefully. Somebody needs to, to get one and shoot 2,000 rounds through it in a couple of days or something. Also, um, hmm, I'm reticent to discuss this, but I'm, I'm going to. I'm not going to tell you exactly what loads I used because I'm afraid one of you glue sniffers will go out and break your gun. Uh, there is a power threshold that you aren't supposed to pass with the Tomcat, 160 foot-pounds. But with the beefed-up slide, which lowers the slide velocity because of the extra weight, this is a blowback gun, we discussed that in detail in the initial video, I wondered if this gun would be less affected by power than the older thin slide Tomcat. So I've mixed in some ammo, mostly European stuff, that exceeds the threshold. I don't see any extra damage from that. But again, you you take a look at the pictures yourself and you tell me what you're seeing. And none of it's excessively powerful, but it is a little bit more powerful in some cases than exactly what was mandated in the manual. But you should, under no circumstances, do that. Again, do not do that. I did it because I test guns on the internet and I need your sweet ad revenue dollars. I do things to my guns that you should never attempt because it makes for better TV. Y'all fuckers will write to me and say, well, you should do this with your guns. Why'd you do it in the... Re because it's a review where I'm testing the gun, you moron. I, I, don't, I don't understand why this shit is so hard for y'all. Like, I'm the dumbest person in the world and I understand this concept. I test the gun and I put it through things that you're not going to put your gun through because it's a test. God, for fuck, fuck. Okay, so I haven't decided I'm going to continue doing that. And again, I've done it sparingly, but it certainly is interesting. So we'll see. I don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, on the whole, I'm very impressed with how this gun is holding up. I shoot it often, uh, at, at least a few magazines, just about every range trip, and usually more than that. And I don't see that stopping anytime soon. I love this thing. Uh, we'll take another look at it down the road. Oh, and one last thing we should discuss. When we looked at this gun in depth for the first review, I only briefly discussed the lack of an extractor. Let's talk a bit more about why there is no extractor. So Beretta says the gun is blowback, so an extractor is unnecessary. But it would be nice to have one, and it would certainly make the gun better. I would prefer it if it did. That's why most other blowback pistols do have extractors. So with the blowback action, the pressure pushes the spent casing out of the chamber when the action opens, and uh, then the you know ejector uh, pushes the case out into the ether somewhere. Some spent casings will hit the floor to be cleaned up later. Some will be cast through the void into the parts dimension where detents and springs go, and the rest will be stolen by brass goblins, the stooped, decrepit old white gentlemen who are frequently fans of this sort of pistol. The pandemic has made brass so valuable that a new threat has emerged. My local range has bred orcs with goblin men to produce a new breed of brass goblin that does not fear the sunlight. They can steal brass all day, outdoors even. And this brass goblin often writes to me to tell me that he hates my foul language. Oh, 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 I love this guy. This was, this was so funny. A, a guy, so a guy wrote to me to tell me that he has to turn my videos off when his wife is around because he doesn't like her to hear swearing. That is some fucking grade A misogyny right there. Like what her like her delicate woman ears can't hear the, the fuck word. That is God, that is weird as hell. Mrs. Penguin had a good laugh about that one. The, the fuck is wrong with you people? Y'all y'all probably get naked with your with your wives twice a year and you stick your pee pee through a hole in the in the bed sheet like Mennonites. I bet your wife finds you irresistible. Uh, of course, the church elders told her that she has to, or she risks eternal damnation. But um, 
Yeah, well, you know, let me tell you, I come from the realm of eternal damnation, and it's it's actually pretty great. You can you can curse as much as you want down there, and it beats the hell out of having sex through a sheet. Um, the extractor. Anyway, even in in a blowback action, an extractor can be advantageous uh, for many reasons. Uh, when the cartridge moves rearward and the action opens, the extractor holds the spent casing firm in place against the slide on its way back to the ejector. While this isn't necessary, the extractor limits the things that can go wrong. The extractor helps the action to work more reliably in weird positions and it ensures that the case is always where it should be, when it should be. And it lets you easily fix a malfunction that involves a round in the chamber, spent or, or otherwise. That's important. Luckily, I didn't need that function, but it would be nice to have it. An extractor is, is very useful. So, when you read about it, Beretta gives us the impression that it's somehow cool that we don't have an extractor. You just don't need one, they say. But the truth is, y you can't have one with this design. Like, there's no way to add one to the design, or else they, they surely would have. Instead, they decided that the tip-up barrel was more important than the extractor. And you know what? I completely agree. It's a great feature, and I love having it. But how does the tip-up barrel prevent the gun from having an extractor? Well, the extractor on something like a Glock or 1911 or Beretta or whatever is under spring tension, and it pops over the rim of the round on the way in when feeding the round into the chamber. Then the round is sort of locked to the slide by the extractor. For the tip-up barrel to work, the round can't be locked to the slide. The round has to be able to move freely with the barrel. Otherwise, every time you tipped up the barrel, you'd have to break the round away from the extractor somehow. And then when you pop the barrel back down into place, you'd have to lock the cartridge back down over the extractor. There's there's nothing like that going, well, I don't have the slide on it, but there's nothing like that going on here. You just, you drop around in here, you know what? You know, that can just drop in there freely, and then this moves around against the against the slide. So, if an extractor was there, it would impede that from working. You'd just have to rig up something crazy or invent something totally new. I can't think of a way that that would work well, but I'm also not an engineer. They went the simple route and decided that one feature was more important than another and ditched the extractor rather than ditch the tip-up barrel. Y'all probably like the tip-up function so much that you don't miss the extractor. But I don't know, it'd be kind of cool to see them tackle that engineering challenge. Is it is it possible? I don't know how the hell they do it, but yeah, maybe it is. Also, now let's put it back together. Kind of catch the little wingies there. Get that thing back on there, and it's ready to go. We're gonna lower our lower our hammer. Very nice. Performance. Overall, for a pocket pistol, performance and reliability have been excellent. Surprisingly so. Pocket pistols have a reputation for being very picky about ammo, and for generally not running 100% of the time, even with ammo that they like. This gun uh, tends to not have a lot of those problems, but with ammo that it likes. It's extremely reliable if it likes the ammo, but with a caveat. My Tomcat requires far more frequent lubrication than most guns, and it likes to be clean. Many of my other guns, if, if not the vast majority of them, really don't give a shit. They'll work clean, dirty, dry, wet, however. But with this gun, you do need to look after it. Lube dries up. Lube it often. Even if you aren't shooting it, check on it periodically and make sure your gun isn't dry. And, uh, you know, I don't know, depending on what you're doing with it, full pocket lint, I guess, that will definitely fuck it up and cause a malfunction, perhaps when you need the gun the most. Generally, mine likes to get lube, I don't know, every 100 to 150 rounds. That keeps it working great. But again, if it's dry, it will absolutely malfunction. In my first video, I mentioned that this gun didn't seem to be picky about ammo. I was cleaning it frequently. For the second round of testing, I decided to just, I don't know, see how long it would go. And really, it's it's not going to go. It's not going to go that long. By by the 200 round mark, you're going to start to have problems. So just keep it at 100 to 150. It'll run flawlessly. Since the last review, I've tried an even wider range of 32 brands, and I found some that the gun just doesn't like. And it won't be particularly useful for me to provide you with a list of what worked and what didn't, because every gun is different. Yours might love a brand that mine hates. For instance, this gun doesn't cycle Norma. But all my other 32s love Norma and eat it up. Norma's great. There's nothing wrong with the quality of Norma. Just this particular Tomcat does not shoot that ammo well. 
So that's not an indictment of Norma at all. Uh, and you know, uh, I know some other people who have Tomcats and there's a different brand that theirs doesn't like. So you just have to do some testing. It's also very important that all of the problems I've encountered were failures to feed. Since this gun does not have an extractor, if the problems involved getting a problematic round out of the chamber or stuck casing, that would effectively shut the gun down when you're trying to defend yourself with it. That would, that would suck. So again, all the failures that were not related to dirtiness happened with only a particular brand of ammo. But with that brand, the problems are frequent. When you find the brand that these guns don't like, God, it's a failure per magazine. I've talked to other people who've experienced this too. There will be in basically one or two brands. You just cannot use those at all. So you very much need to put the time in to decide what you're going to use with this gun. What are you going to carry in it if you decide to carry it? I'd recommend shooting 200 rounds with a certain load through it just to make sure. And again, not picking on Norma. Every gun's going to have a different brand that it doesn't like. Uh, you also don't have a way to lock the slide back. I was relieved to see that when the gun does fail, the problems can be remedied just with different ammo or cleaning and could be fixed in the moment just by whacking the magazine a lot of the time. It wasn't even necessary to, to touch the slide. So if you keep it clean, feed it the preferred ammo, you will very rarely have a problem. That's the most you can hope for from a pocket gun. Really, for something in this size class, that's, that's excellent. So now, what's it like to actually shoot the gun? And that's what you really wanted to hear about, right? The fun part. Yeah, I mean, I, this gun, it's hard to beat it. The question is, though, can I shoot it faster than that? Let's see. Not and get hits, apparently. <laughs> Doesn't like these new rounds I ordered. Hmm. I ordered Norma's. Yeah, it doesn't like the Norma's. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it does not like. I mean, it's an accurate gun though. Let's see if I can hit that plate over there. Yep. Shoots well. Let's take a let's take a long shot. Get back here to 25 yards. Yeah. Guess that'll be kind of fun. Ow! I ran into the table. Oh, shit. That sounds like your problem. You didn't tell me it was there. Well. but one was on the 25. The picnic table edge is supposed to be 25. That's not bad. Let's see, I think we got one more butt magazine here. I wonder if I can hit one of the plates. I don't know if I can hit the plate at 25. I haven't tried that before. I've hit one of the uh, steel ones at, uh, at 50 yards. Often shooting guns that are geared towards carry, 
pocket guns in, in particular, they really aren't as pleasant as shooting something larger. Now, this isn't as fun as shooting something like a Glock 19, but it is definitely the most pleasant of the small guns. For a gun this size, this firing experience is super fun. We've got an excellent trigger for a small gun, a good grip shape, a great mag release, and the sights are, are actually half decent if you use them for a bit. Triggers break in with use, and we know that they can change quite a bit once a gun is broken in. With the Tomcat, I don't know if I've seen much change in the trigger pull with use. The DA pull might be a little bit smoother, uh, but, but not much. The DA pull is long and heavy, as you'd want it to be. You know what? I really don't like dry firing this gun. I don't have any 32 snap caps, but, but yeah, fuck it. We'll, we'll do it. Like I checked it twice to make sure one one loaded. What the fuck? The DA pull is long and heavy, but it's smooth. For most people, that's going to be their primary safety mechanism. If you want to, you can just ignore the the safety lever and just use that. You know, no, make sure you know what you're doing if you're going to do that. I don't advise that if you, if you don't know what you're doing, but that's that's one option. And then all subsequent shots will give you a nice single action, of course. Very short and crisp for a gun this size. The The best trigger of any pocket gun that I've tried. I think it's great. The, uh, the trigger reset is also relatively short. The, the trigger is one of the most important parts of why this gun is so much fun to shoot. With a lot of pocket guns, you almost dread the trigger pull. While here, you, you actually look forward to it. Berettas always have such good triggers. And because of the tip-up barrel, you don't have to manually lower uh, the hammer. When you load the gun, just, you know, don't rack around out of the magazine. Tip the barrel up, drop around in, um, close the barrel, and then load the magazine into the gun. At no point is the hammer cocked unless you decide that you want to use the manual safety and carry the gun cocked and locked. For pocket carry, that would be unwise. But, you know, when you do drop the hammer, you can you can take the magazine out and have the, have the barrel up, and then you're safely, you're safely lowering the hammer like so, and a lot less risk. Than with other guns that have no decocker. Can't see what the hell I'm doing here. Microphone's blocking my face. You know, or you can carry it, you know, double action mode with the safety on or whatever you want. You can carry it however, however you like. But I do think, I don't know, the manual safety is so easy to, to actuate. Carrying it cocked with the safety on, especially like in a pocket, I, I don't think that's a good idea. I really don't. I, I wouldn't do that. I don't think I would encourage anyone to, to do that. But the tip-up barrel, it's awesome. This being a blowback gun, there's a lot more spring pressure that you're having to overcome with the slide. And the slide's kind of small and, and tough to grip, even though it is really fat. Really, really wide. Well, I have no trouble racking this gun. Many people will. For smaller folks, this is going to be a chore. Uh, but with the tip-up barrel, anybody can load the gun easily. and You don't have to worry about putting a hole in the floor, trying to lower the hammer. The grips and magazine release have really grown on me. I, I like both very much. This uh, base plate on the magazine provides a little ledge, kind of for me to for me to hang on to. So for me, the Tomcat is distinctly a two finger grip, as it will be for most humans. And the ledge of the base plate sits just beneath my ring finger, wedging these two fingers up on the gun, giving me excellent purchase. It feels really good. Usually, I prefer the American location for a push button release, which is where, in this case, the barrel tip up button is. Or better yet, the German paddle. The paddle is king for me. But after some use, despite what it looks like, I don't know, this doesn't feel like a heel release, even though that's technically where it is. There's not really room on the frame for a button to be in the usual place. So Beretta moved it down, and we activate it with our support hand instead of our, uh, our dominant thumb. You could do that, but... After spending some time with it, I've worked out a technique that's given me pretty good results so far. You can reach your dominant thumb down and hit the button, but I find this works better. Step one, count your rounds, allowed if you must, to seven. This leaves one in the chamber if you load the chamber initially, plus a full magazine. Step two, open your grip and hit the magazine release button with your support thumb as it moves down away from the gun to find a new magazine. Step three, grip the new magazine with your support hand and load the gun. Step four, Continue firing, counting your rounds aloud if you must. Repeat the previous steps. This is pretty fast, and it works well for me. In the past, some of you have said that you can't count your rounds under duress. I, I don't know. I've never been in a gunfight, so I have no clue if that's true or not. I don't intend to be in a gunfight. 
But I've also been taught by instructors that you can learn difficult skills and perform them under duress if you practice them often enough and you practice them in the right way. But all that to say, I like this magazine release. Um, you can perform a tactical reload in a similar way. Step one, uh, grab the new magazine between your support hand, middle, and ring fingers. Step two, bring your support hand to the gun and eject the partial magazine with your support thumb into your waiting support hand. Step three, keep the gun with the full new magazine on target while you situate the partial magazine wherever you would like for it to be. These reloads are pretty fast for something this size. This might be the fastest pocket pistol to reload that, that I've tried anyway. I think I mentioned it in the original video. Uh, the sights are small, but they're, they're still big for a pocket pistol. I do wish the front sight was an insert or colored in some way. You can always paint it orange. That would definitely help. The silver can kind of get lost in the afternoon sunlight. A lot of folks mentioned that to me after my original video. And you know what? I've come to see that you're right. That's definitely the case. So overall, this gun performs very well, and it's a lot of fun to shoot. I really enjoy it. So why might you choose this gun? The Tomcat seems to be geared towards the folks who would buy something like a PPK. You can even see it in the aesthetics. Folks who might find a Glock 19 too large or who want something small and classy that's easy to keep on you. Because it's a DASA gun with a manual safety, this thing looks... Like, it might be a good one for small beginners, but I think it has too many features. Everything on the gun is so small, it'll feel frustratingly fiddly to novices unless they really commit to training. If a new shooter is willing and able to get instruction and train often, yeah, they'd have no trouble with this gun. But most folks, they don't train often or at all. Uh, they buy a gun, shoot it once or twice, and that's it. And then pocket pistols just, you know, they're not the most reliable option either. And you have to find the right ammo for it. That might be frustrating. But I, I don't know. If, you, if you're new and you're not going to get a lot of training and you're just going to shoot once or twice a year, if that describes you, I'd choose something simpler personally. The features also seem geared towards enthusiasts who are concerned about things like fast reloads from a pocket pistol and a nice trigger pull. The tip-up barrel isn't just for folks with weaker hands. That's a great feature no matter who you are. Even experienced shooters hate lowering the hammer on a live round. It's scary. And even if you take a million precautions, accidents happen. People fuck up. The Tomcat might also make a great supplementary gun. If you have a Glock 19, this would be great for the gym or an evening jog or dinner at a fancy restaurant. It's a, it's a classy gun. Final thoughts. This is a gun that I love, but it's not for everyone. If you don't need a small gun, don't get a small gun. If you just hate 32 and can never go smaller than 9mm, then, then don't. I'm not telling you you have to. Do what's right for you. But under certain circumstances, the Tomcat is a great option. It's stylish, small enough, and very easy to shoot well. It's kind of the, the Goldilocks pocket pistol. The best all-arounder. It's bigger than most, but also better at the range. It's heavier than most, but more reliable than most. You see what I mean. It's just a very solid gun for its type. But I can't get over how much I enjoy shooting the damn thing. Consistently, it somehow gets into my range bag. How does that keep happening? Every time I look, there it is. And other folks love shooting it too. When you take it to the range, a lot of people will stop by to have a look. It's kind of flashy and folks can hear that consistent ring of the steel plates. How many pocket pistols can get six out of seven rounds on a half size steel target at 25 yards? This is a good one. Thanks for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful evening. I'll talk to you soon. Good night.